Welcome to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation CF Education Day webcast, CF Liver Disease. I'm Leslie Hazel, Director of Patient Resources at the CF Foundation. This webcast is hosted by the Foundation and supported through an unrestricted educational grant from Genentech. To learn more about CF clinical research, CF lung health and lung disease, nutrition, germs, infection control, healthcare coverage, and more, please watch an archived webcast on the Foundation's website. Joining me is Dr. Michael Narkowitz, Professor of Pediatrics, the Hewitt Andrews Chair in Pediatric Liver Disease, and the Medical Director of the Pediatric Liver Center and Liver Transplantation at Children's Hospital Colorado. He is also a leader in CF liver disease and is the primary investigator of the Cystic Fibrosis Liver Disease Network. For your information, this webcast does contain a picture of a diseased liver from cystic fibrosis. So welcome, Mike, and Thanks, thank Leslie. you for joining us and helping us learn about CF liver disease. So my first question is, what is it? What is liver disease in CF? So for today, we're going to talk about CF liver disease as advanced scarring in the liver. That's the most important form of liver disease in CF. And it's called cirrhosis in many cases. And in cirrhosis, you get very advanced scarring. And then eventually, blood, which is going through the liver, begins to have difficulty going through the liver. And you develop what's called portal hypertension. So for today, when we talk about CF liver disease, that's what we're going to refer to. So how does cystic fibrosis affect the liver? So the protein that's lacking in CF, mm -hmm. called CFTR, mm -hmm. is found on the cells that make bile mm -hmm. in the liver. As shown in the slide here, they're one of many channels which move water and chloride mm -hmm. into the bile. In CF, that protein is lacking, and what we think happens is water does not get into the bile very well. And then eventually what happens is you get plugging in the liver. This slide shows thick protein secretions plugging the bile duct in a liver shown by the arrow. Eventually something happens in some but not all patients mm -hmm. with CF where this triggers an inflammatory response that leads to scarring in the liver. Okay, so I know that people with CF get regular, or are supposed to have regular liver test level blood work drawn. What are they? What does that tell you? And is it a, it, does it help people predict whether or not um, somebody's going to develop CF liver disease? So as part of the CF guidelines, it is recommended that individuals have what are called liver function tests or blood tests that assess the liver on an annual basis. Most of those blood tests tell us whether there's inflammation in the mm -hmm. liver, but they don't really tell us whether there's scarring in the liver. And they can also be abnormal from other things like medication responses or if you have nutritional problems. In reality, almost everyone with CF, as shown by this slide, mm -hmm. really have, will have at some point some abnormal liver blood tests. They don't predict whether you're going to develop CF liver disease. So are there any mutations? We know so much more about the mutations of CF. Are there any mutations that are correlated or related to if I have this mutation, then that means I'm going to have liver disease? Great question. In CF liver disease, we do know that people who get CF liver disease have the more severe mutations in the CFTR protein. So they have pancreatic insufficiency. Mm -hmm. However, unlike the lung, where virtually everyone who has a severe mutation will develop some form of lung disease. In the liver, only about 5 to 10 percent of people develop CF liver disease, so it doesn't mean you're going to necessarily get CF liver disease. So how is liver disease in people with cystic fibrosis diagnosed? Great question. The main way that we diagnose CF liver disease are by either clinical features or findings that we find in radiologic or imaging studies. Mm -hmm. Uh, the clinical features we look for are generally a very hard, lumpy, bumpy liver mm -hmm. and a big spleen. That tells us if we've got bad scarring in the liver. By ultrasound or CT, you can also see a very lumpy, bumpy liver, mm -hmm. lots of little nodules. It looks like grapes, actually, uh, with that, and that is a feature of CF liver disease. Occasionally, liver biopsy uh, can help us determine if you have advanced scarring. 
But the problem in CF liver disease is that the scarring can be very patchy. Mm -hmm. So it can look bad in one area and you really don't have CF liver ah. disease. Or it can look good in one area and you really do have CF liver mm -hmm. disease. So it sounds like there's still a lot of work to try and tease out details of CF liver disease for diagnosis and, and prevention and or prediction of it that's going on. That's true. It's easy when the liver disease is mm -hmm. very advanced. What's really hard is trying to find early, what we would like to call early liver disease. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very hard. We don't have good tools for that yet. So uh, what are the risk factors or what can people do to prevent from getting CF liver disease? So in terms of risk factors, there's nothing someone does mm -hmm. that can lead them to get CF liver disease. So it's not a medication that we give, it's not something a patient would do. But we do know that preventing things that can cause liver injury would be good for individuals who might be at risk for mm -hmm. CF liver disease, which is really sort of everyone with CF liver disease. And so those things would be making sure that they're a child with CF is vaccinated against the viruses that can cause liver disease, particularly hepatitis A and B. Those mm -hmm. are the two vaccines we have. As individuals get older, avoiding excessive alcohol use, which can in injure the liver. Maintaining really good nutrition can help with that. And uh, for those rare individuals who might put themselves at risk for other liver damaging mm -hmm. things like IV drug use, uh, those, it would be good to avoid that if we could. So at what age um, does CF liver disease usually develop? So CF liver disease is a disease of childhood. Virtually all patients with CF liver disease are diagnosed by the age of 15. Mm -hmm. Over half of patients with CF liver disease are diagnosed by the time they're 10. Oh, wow. In adults, it's almost reportable for an adult who does not have CF liver disease to then develop CF liver disease. So most of the time, by the time somebody's 15, they're going to know whether or not they have CF liver disease. That's right. Okay. So you had mentioned earlier, what are the kinds of problems that somebody who does have CF liver disease, what are some of the kind of problems that they have? I think you'd mentioned earlier an enlarged spleen. What else? Right. So most people with CF liver disease actually don't have a lot of problems, mm -hmm. but eventually you can develop problems and they almost all relate to the scarring in the liver. So the first thing we usually see is a big spleen, mm -hmm. and uh, that can be found on exam. If the scarring is more advanced and the, what we call the portal hypertension mm -hmm. gets worse, patients will develop fluid in their abdomen. They can develop bleeding from dilated blood vessels in their swallowing tube, and so they might throw up blood or have black stools as mm -hmm. a consequence of that. And then it can also make it even more difficult to gain weight and have really bad nutritional problems. But now the nutritional problems, is that kind of a later stage of CF liver disease? Or is that something that if I keep my nutrition up, it's going to help prevent my CF liver disease? It is a later stage in CF liver disease. And as best we can tell, maintaining good nutrition actually helps we reduce the likelihood of complications from CF liver disease. Oh, well, that's good to know. So how is, how is liver disease in people with CF treated? So right now there's no great treatment for mm -hmm. liver disease in CF. We do tend to use one medication. It's called ursodeoxycholic acid. It's a bile acid that helps bring more water into the bile. Mm -hmm. The way I explain it to families is kind of like the DNAs for the liver. It makes the bile less thick. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, nothing that we've uh, discovered suggests that this reduces scarring in the liver. It may help with bile flow, but whether it really stops the scarring process is not clear. I think that there are new therapies coming down the road, but they're not available commercially yet. So someone asked, um, when we asked questions about that, they said, well, if I, as long as I take my drugs for my liver disease, I'll be okay. That will help them, but I'm not sure it will prevent and the progression of uh, their liver disease. Okay, so should a person who has CF liver disease see a GI specialist in addition to everybody at their CF center? I, I think absolutely. Liver disease is just like lung disease. It's got its own niche mm -hmm. of uh, experts, and the care of liver disease is advancing at very rapid rates. So I think it's important for people who have CF liver disease mm -hmm. to see someone who is staying up to date on liver disease 
and uh, in CF. So how does somebody find a GI specialist who may be familiar with CF liver disease? So what I recommend is always first talk to your CF center doctor mm -hmm. because they'll know who uh, they use and who's interested. But let's say someone's not available at your center or they're not sure. There are a couple of places you could look. For mm -hmm. children, there's a very good website to search for a liver doctor. And for adults, there's also a good website. Both of these are shown on the slide. So I have to ask, because almost everybody wants to know, what's the prognosis for somebody with cystic fibrosis who has liver disease? So the majority of patients with liver disease, still their major problem remains their lungs. Mm -hmm. What determines their lifespan is generally how well is their lung care and what's their lung function. So over half of the patients with CF liver disease, it's really their lungs that determine their outcome. About half of the patients, though, do have complications that can impact their mm -hmm. life from their liver disease and may need procedures to reduce the portal hypertension or go on to liver transplantation. So tell me a little bit more about liver transplant. Um, how many people with CF get a liver transplant and how well do they do after transplant? So uh, liver transplantation is a rare event in CF. As of last year, there were 168 people in the United States that had ever received a oh, liver wow. transplant for CF. Mm -hmm. So that's not a very big number when you right. think that there are roughly 30,000 patients with mm -hmm. CF who have been diagnosed in, the, in North America. Uh, but it can happen, and what happens is a liver, much like the one you see on the screen, mm -hmm. is removed. And when that happens, though, the outcome from liver transplantation is really very good in CF patients, but it is also determined by how good is their lung health. Oh. So if your lungs are not very good, that's your likelihood of having a great outcome from transplant is not as good. So once again, it's very important, no matter whether they have severe lung disease or not, for people with CF to take care of their lungs and do their medications and their treatments that are recommended. Absolutely. So last question, and that is, what is the current research related to CF liver Oh. CF liver disease, and is there anything within the CF drug development pipeline that could help? So in terms of drug development pipeline, I think there are several uh, things that are in the pipeline that I think will have a potential impact on liver disease. So the medications that improve the uh, CFTR function, mm -hmm. theoretically would improve bile flow, less thick bile, that may help. And there are also drugs that can improve the other channels that move chloride and water. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about the liver is that there are many more of those channels in the liver than there are in the lungs. So those drugs, which haven't worked very well in animal models for lung disease, I think have great potential in the, lung, in mm -hmm. the liver. But the key area of research is trying to find out who should we treat with those medications. Uh, once you have advanced scarring, there's not much hope that that's going to get better by these therapies. Mm -hmm. So the research in CF right now is focused on trying to identify which patients have a high risk to develop advanced liver disease so that we could identify those individuals and treat them. Mm -hmm. And I lead a large study of uh, nine centers that are looking at some simple tools that are available right now today on the shelf, mm -hmm. such as ultrasound or blood tests special blood tests to predict who's at risk to develop CF liver disease. Mm -hmm. In addition, there are other researchers across the world that are looking at other potential biomarkers in the blood or urine and investigating other radiologic studies like MRI and other uh, non-invasive tests to predict who's got uh, a risk for developing advanced liver disease. So while CF liver disease is a small portion of the population of the people with cystic fibrosis in the United States. It sounds like there's a good um, amount of research going on to try and help find out more and identify people who may develop CF liver disease earlier. That's true, and the foundation has really recognized that CF liver disease can impact mm -hmm. the outcome of individuals with CF, albeit a small number, and has really invested heavily in research in this area. Thank you, Mike. You can find out more about the uh, CF liver disease study that Mike was talking about from the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation website. In the Quick Links area, click on Find a Clinical Trial. When you get to that page, click on the button that says Advanced Search, type in the word PUSH, P-U-S-H, and what will, 
will return is more detailed information about the study, including the nine centers that are participating. You can also ask your CF Foundation Accredited Care Center if there is any liver disease research related to CF going on at their center. So I would like to thank you for watching the CF liver disease webcast and Mike for answering questions and helping us learn a lot more about CF liver disease. I would also like to thank Rick Vasta and the technical crew, Melissa Chin and Melissa Muller, Genentech, and the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation for making this webcast possible. Thank you.